Thank you all for joining. It was great to have you all to come and uh, in this special session. Here I'm, I'm Thamer Yakub, and I don't know if you if you see this is uh, this is my grand dog. It's my son's dog. is here with us in this session. He's enjoying this session here as work from home. Uh, I hope everybody is safe at uh, at working from home at this uh, extraordinary time that we are facing all uh, around the world. And uh, we thought of, um, I thought personally, my team and I, I thought to, to start talking to you and communicate and, and to have a chat to see where we're going. And uh, as, uh, as I did before during the workshops and conferences, I used to have a lot of uh, discussion with, uh, with some of you. And I thought now let's uh, put it back together and we can have this kind of a personal time. So we discuss uh, what these things, uh, and what things are we working on, and uh, you can ask in, in, anything for me, and I will be more than happy to answer. So uh, for some of you who uh, send questions, uh, there are many questions that I already received, uh, So, and I put them together here so you can see them. So uh, we'll start with these questions. Uh, the questions that you will see as I move on, Okay, so uh, we categorize them basically into three. So there are some technical questions uh, and some are more into rock science focusing questions and uh, some of them are personal. So we'll start with uh, the technical question here. Uh, the questions that uh, from a technical, you can see uh, the first, uh, I will say the first question is, uh, Somebody's asking, we are with almost uh, all rock science software. Is it possible to be supported in the modeling process and send any doubts to rock science engineering specialists? And, uh, and can we write papers with rock science using the project info? Uh, absolutely, uh, you can use, and we encourage that you will have our software to be used in your projects and you will, and also feel free to publish and do case studies. And not only that, we, uh, as uh, I did with many of you when I see you guys, uh, I encourage that even you will send it to us so we can send it to all our customers around the world. So I'm sure you are receiving, some of you are receiving our rock news, which we are doing it on monthly basis. Uh, so in these rock news, we are trying to add a case study um, in every uh, rock news to so people can see what others are working on and on these and these tools when it comes to asking us for modeling absolutely we uh, as a part of our maintenance plus uh, the, you are eligible to uh, to receive a technical support and also uh, on uh, on an extra Thing that we added you we have expert modeling so you can reach out to us if you want any extra care of the model that we create or we do some kind of analysis we can help you that on on a fee based on your license so uh, to go to the second technical question now the second uh, is and I think the third is how do we deal with RU values in slope? Can you explain typical values on the groundwater coinciding with the crest slope, mid height of the slope, uh, et cetera? Uh, this is a, a good question. Uh, if you're dealing with slope stability, there are different ways of entering the value of pore water pressure in your analysis. So you can use water surfaces, you can use RU. If you're familiar with RU, RU is a, basically, it's a, it's a factor multiplied by your vic uh, vertical effective stress. So based on that, we will calculate what is the pore water pressure. From that, you can see it is varying based on your effective vertical stress. So for example, how do I use it from a slope, mid height, and these ones? You can use it based on your knowledge of your slope on. If we take the, uh, the second question of how can we use it in a product like a rock plane and S-wedge? Now, this is uh, 
if you familiar with these products, Rockplane and Swatch, these are tools focusing on rock slope engineering. So we are dealing with the rock to be an impact and all the failure is happening through the joint. So to apply the pressure in the joint, there are multiple ways to do it in the program. Uh, so basically you define it with the maximum at the mid height, maximum at the crest. It depends on the scenario that you have for how do you want to deal with the water and the dissipation of the water. Now, how do I use an RU? As I said, it's a fraction or it's a percentage of your vertical stress, uh, normal stress. You can do it if you have a value and you will, and you can use a function in rock plane as wedge to use a custom distribution to look at how do you use an RU for this uh, rock slope engineering. Uh, we'll go to the questions after. Uh, for finite element groundwater seepage, uh, it seems that there is a lot of questions on the water side. How do we get the total head value in the groundwater modeling? What is the difference between the groundwater analysis mode and steady uh, state seepage analysis? What difference between groundwater and surface water analysis? Now, uh, when it comes to finite element seepage analysis, as you are aware, in slide two and, and RS2, uh, there are fully 2D seepage analysis uh, in the program. So you can do a steady state or a transient uh, seepage analysis in them. What is the difference between the seepage analysis and water? It should be the same if the water that you are using, it's similar to the phreatic surface that the seepage analysis is, is used. So if you use a steady state seepage analysis and you take the phreatic surface from the analysis, uh, back to the modeler and use it as your water surface, you will see both analysis will give exactly the same. So the question is, uh, which approach do we use? Uh, it's up to you if you want to look at different pore water pressure distribution and you want to see the influence of uh, timed water, definitely uh, I recommend to use a full uh, finite element ground seepage analysis for that type of a problem. Now, uh, the other technical question here is saying, for material uh, and loading, uh, add water table, which type of water table do I use? Uh, and what does this data come from? Uh, add water table for a material and loading. Uh, the water table that you are using, it will affect the whole analysis, as we all know. So which one do you use? You, you have the data. There are many ways to enter the pore water pressure distribution in our tools. You can use the water surface, you can use the seepage analysis, you can use pore water pressure grid, and from that, you will calculate, basically the program calculates what is the effect of the water on the overall analysis. So uh, to go to the next is, uh, question comes for slope angle optimization, so from slope angle wizard. This is specifically a slope angle optimization in slide two. The tutorial said to pick from the toe to the crest, the positive value of scenario on increments or clockwise. Why do these not work with all types of values? Uh, that's a very good, uh, um, uh, actually, uh, what you looked here, when you look at uh, changing the slope phase, it depends on the complexity of the material intersect your, your face. Because when you are going to change the slope angle, you are going to clip it, to clip these boundaries, to start to move it based on the angle. Uh, that's why it is very uh, difficult type because some of the boundaries, you think about it, couple uh, bound, material boundary could be easy. When you have complicated that material will change, it might affect it. So that's why we are trying to, to clip it as much as we can to get uh, some kind of a valid geometry, but definitely it's the user who have more control. The other way to do it, you can bring your DXF into the profile if, you have, uh, if you're using slide two with a soil profile. And from that, definitely you can look at different scenarios based on a more accurate uh, slope face DXF if you have a more control on it. 
Okay, and the uh, question after that is saying, uh, could you please explain tension crack modeling? I want to understand probabilistic analysis and back analysis. Uh, this is, uh, uh, it's actually not one question, it's uh, three questions. And these three questions, we usually cover it in the three uh, modules in, uh, in our courses. Now let's start, uh, and, and I need to answer it in, in two minutes. So to put it together is uh, tension crack. Uh, tension crack, we know that uh, the material, you're solving a system of equation in slope stability to, because it's an uh, indeterministic type of a, uh, a function. To solve it, you are doing some assumption, some assumption on, uh, on how do we deal with inter-slice forces. Now, you specify specific function. Based on that assumption, you could have a region in your material to have uh, tension. So it depends on the modeler or the analysis, uh, the person who is in charge in the analysis. Are you accepting tension? You don't accept tension. How much is that tension is valid in your real life? And so on. So based on this, you can add the tension crack what does, what, how does it do in the analysis? Any slices on these tension cracks, I will assume the inter-slice forces is not there. So basically there is no more of a shear in that location. And this is how we are ignoring the tension effect. Now the probabilistic analysis and back analysis, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more intense. Uh, and I would recommend that uh, there is uh, there are going to be uh, three webinars uh, in the near future, in starting in, in the next week on on slide two. So the first one is it's going to talk about uh, briefly on tension crack, the one after on seepage, and the last one is going to talk about probabilistic analysis and some back analysis. So I will recommend that uh, uh, to attend it. And if you have any other questions, particularly on that please feel free to, to send it to us. Now, uh, more technical questions. Uh, when uh, you do a 3D analysis of slope stability, what additional input do you need to get the safety factor of slide three or strength factor of R3? Now, uh, when we go to the 3D analysis, uh, what is different between a 3D to 2D from an input parameter? From input parameter, it's exactly the same. You're dealing with the material, and the material has a strength that you need for limit equilibrium and has a strength and a stiffness if you're dealing with uh, more into continuum RS3 approach. So as an input, it's exactly the same input that is required from a material perspective. If you're asking me from other than a material input, if you're looking now, then geometry, definitely the geometry you're dealing with surfaces, you need more into 3D. So more into a 3D surfaces, your, your geology and so on. And these geology definitely, as we all agree on, it depends on where are you going to do the analysis? It will affect your factor of safety. So the, uh, what you need here, material input is, is the same. The geology, you need more to give you the 3D sense of your problem. Now, uh, I have many questions is coming through the chat and I will try to answer it uh, at the end if we have time. I'm going through these questions that we received when people uh, registered in this session. And in any case, if I didn't have any time to answer these, I will promise that uh, we're gonna compile all these questions and answers, and we will send it to all the participants uh, to, to make sure I answered all. Now, uh, the, the question after this, in RST, in RS2, when rock bolts are installed, why doesn't the factor of safety change when installing them in the rock mass? Now, uh, this is kind of, uh, uh, also, we, we do that in a session when we, uh, when we give the course on RS2 and supports in general. In uh, RS2, and this is not related to RS2, I want to make sure this is not software related to problem, this is the concept of a 2D analysis, a plane 
the strain analysis in FEM world. When you do uh, and, uh, a 2D analysis, keep in mind bolts are a passive type of a support, which means all the forces and reaction, it is going to be affected when you have a deformation. So the mobilization of deformation, it will control how much is this bolt going to support and so on. So in RS2, in the plane strain 2D analysis, if, the, if you do the excavation and the stage after you add a support, definitely you will not see anything because that deformation, it happened in the stage before, nothing is going to happen in the stage after. That's why there is no mobilization of any forces to be transferred to the bolt, and that's why you will not see anything. The way to do it, it's more into, you will do more into a, a softening for the material, or you apply a pressure with a factor. And I think we have a couple tutorials in RS2 to address on how to do more accurately support. If you want more in, in doing it in real behavior, RS3, which is the 3D, will be more suitable to do the full support analysis. Now, uh, from there, we will go is, uh, in RS2 mesh setup, there are different types of elements, three noted triangles, and uh, I'm sure there are six. Uh, which, how do we select the correct element to use? Um, meshing, in general, for the questions related to the mesh, mesh in FEM world, it's, uh, it's, a piece, it's a kind of an art. This is how I see it. And the more you are involved in the numerical analysis, you will gain more expertise on which mesh is suitable and which type of elements and nodes are suitable. Definitely, as a rule of thumb, you will start with a simple type of, uh, of elements and three-noded is, uh, is, uh, is very useful, uh, powerful, and fast to start. Then you will move to a six noted, which are more accurate, specifically when you're dealing with high stress in a gradient, when you have near excavation and you want more accurate results, you will go with a higher type of elements, six noted. So you will start simple with a three noted, uh, four noted for, uh, for, for type of uh, uh, quadrilateral type of nodes, then you will go with six noded or eight noded when you go more into a detailed analysis. Okay. Uh, in uh, how can we get our research data that contains representative data if there are areas that only have one lithology? Uh, this is back to the concept what we do in geotech. How much uh, data that you have in your analysis, okay? Uh, the numerical things is, is accurate based on the accuracy of your input. So if you are giving me one layer for a material and you're expecting things to match the reality, I will question it. Uh, but we have to deal with what we have as an input. So you have to come to, to more into uh, intelligent decision of and using a lot of your geotech expertise to see if this is enough or I need more. Uh, definitely more is input, is more of the things that match to the reality, but we are dealing with the cost effective projects and most of the time we don't have enough. Uh, the other is to find the safety factor on a slope uh, simulating through 2D modeling. And um, so the question is, shear rock shear strength versus rock or basically shear stress. How is these different? Keep in mind, one of them is material specific. One of them is geometry and analysis has been carried out. So basically you calculate what is the shear stress based on the geometry that you're giving. And from that, you compare it to the shear strength of the material. And by, based on that, we will give you what is the factor of safety? So basically, base one is calculated from the material parameters and one from uh, the geometry. Okay. The other question, we are still in the technical. Uh, a lot of our clients uh, and other engineering teams seem to be confused uh, or understanding the analysis methodology of setup. 
uh, is it continual finite element software package and uh, what circumstances will settle the result to be the same uh, computed to 3D continuum and uh, so the question about settle uh, settle 3D is is a is a unique product in a sense it uses two uh, two type of analysis the stresses is coming from uh, a typical uh, Boussinesque or Westergaard analysis and the consolidation it is done through a Terzaki 1D seepage analysis. So you're combining some kind of uh, analytical dash uh, numerical for the 3D stresses and you will combine it with a finite element 1D uh, seepage analysis. So you're combining the two worlds. Okay, so that's why it is a 3D, a full 3D elastic homogeneous stress analysis. Then you will get from that stress analysis, you will take it to a finite element, uh, the dissipation of pore water pressure along the grid, along, sorry, along the query line. And from that, you will get the pore water pressure to continue doing your timed consolidation and your secondary consolidation. So this is the unique of the settle, okay? And uh, and from there, I think I answered the tech questions that comes from uh, uh, what people are registered. And there are, as I said, there are uh, many that I can see here that I will try to answer after answering some of these, uh, your personal question that came to me. I hope it's not, uh, too much personal, I will try to cover uh, some of them. So the first question for the personal, how does the day in your life look like? Oh, uh, my days are general is very hectic. Uh, to, uh, to be, uh, to have many hats to run on the same day, it's, uh, but it's very enjoyable because I will deal with many issues from uh, business, side as well as technical side so so the a day in my in my life look as uh, waking up to rush to go to work from early morning so i am uh, i want to be there as early as possible uh, then i will continue till i reach uh, my night time to go to bed so it's too too much of work uh, but it's uh, that is also a sign of when you start to enjoy your work, it will be part of your, of your day and it's part of your life. So that's why if there is a way of how I describe it is uh, I, I enjoy this, uh, this life and this work. So the second is uh, what are your top five essential items for day to day life? Oh, why? Oh, good. Uh, I wish I have uh, this is rant and I deal with them, but lately I'm starting to to put some of them into a regular routine. So I started lately before this COVID-19 to do uh, to force to myself to to exercise. So an essential day to day was an exercise in the morning, and usually I do it at 6 a.m. So I want to finish it so I can move on with my day. Uh, I, I have a part of my day to have fun, and the fun part is dealing with my colleagues at work. Uh, so it's so enjoyable to, to, to have a chat and to laugh with them and, and uh, to sometimes to scream in the office, which is, which is still fine, but uh, uh, everybody knows that we are having a very, very respectful and very kind of a, a friendly atmosphere that helps a lot. Other than these two, I will add to it uh, uh, some challenge. Every day I will challenge myself with uh, a simple read of a research that I do uh, on my own. Um, the other one is um, definitely family uh, that I enjoy. Uh, I enjoy much with friends and relatives and extended relatives, actually, that uh, sometimes it will be uh, too much. Uh, the other part is uh, I am uh, also very involved in spiritual life. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a devoted Christian, so that is part of, of my life to, to make it as an essential. 
Okay, uh, what is your favorite project so far? Uh, all uh, what I deal with with rock science products, uh, um, many of them they I deal with them on regular basis, uh, and uh, some of them I was involved in the programming of them, uh, like RS2 uh, and uh, and Settle. So basically these and examine three. So these are things that I was involved in programming. So the finite element, boundary element, and settle. Uh, one of the favorite I will say, uh, which is close to my heart is settle because settle is, uh, I was involved in it from the scratch to, to start designing it from, from the beginning. So basically the story behind it, it was, uh, we went to meet friends and consultant to see what, what do they need and how do they vision this product. So the product is started, so we build it from what, uh, what the practitioner needed and we build it to be more and more is very user centric. So this is a, a project that I found The audio was off, something with the computer maybe now is back. So if it is back, yes, thank you. So uh, so the shows of Net Netflix, back to it, uh, some drama with thrillers, so maybe Blacklist. Um, well, I, I think I watched uh, six sessions and maybe I have one session to go, but we'll see. Uh, this is uh, basically more I will watch during my travel, so basically I have time at the hotel to watch more sessions. So. Uh, the questions after that. What kind of a watch do you wear? <laughs> okay, uh, that's becoming very personal. Uh, I like tag, uh, but my next watch that I'm planning to buy soon, it will be Omega. And don't ask me why. <laughs> okay, uh, what countries have you traveled to and which place is your favorite? Uh, would you like, where do you want like to go? Uh, I travel a lot, and people who are uh, following our uh, net, uh, our uh, LinkedIn, you will see that uh, I, I do a lot of workshops and conferences around the, the world. Uh, I, I like South America. Uh, I like uh, specifically Peru because uh, uh, our, my representative Raúl there he treats me well, and he will take me for ceviche. So uh, I like South America. Uh, uh, anything to explore in the future, uh, maybe uh, uh, Southeast Asia, so to be more there and we will see. The next question, uh, Mac or PC, that's easy, uh, I am a PC guy. Although my phone is uh, iPhone and I use iPad a lot, but when it comes to computer, I am a PC. Uh, what is your ideal vacation? My ideal vacation is uh, a beach, a warm weather and I breeze. So if you combine these three, that's heaven for me and this is a vacation. Okay, uh, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I am, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna say something, maybe you, you agree or disagree. I like uh, pistachio. Uh, I like pistachio ice cream, uh, and sometimes I add to it uh, coconut ice cream. So it's kind of these weird type of flavors, but it's good to explore. So I, I don't want to be traditional vanilla guy. Uh, what is your favorite time of the day and why? Um, I like to see a sunrise. Uh, uh, it's, it gives hope, and that's why I like it. So I like to see starting of a hope. Uh, this is what I like. Uh, what is your favorite uh, 
three pieces of life advice or what? Uh, the favorite is uh, enjoy what you're, do what you're doing, laugh a lot, and always, always challenge yourself. Uh, don't put a lot of expectation. Uh, this is how, how I do. Uh, <laughs> if you were a zombie apocalypse, what role would you have in your survival group? Food and water, medic, builder, defense, etc. Uh, I will take the role of encourager. I like to encourage others to move on. So uh, I will be with that team, encouraged to go, go, go. That's uh, my role. Uh, what advice do you have for someone looking to start uh, their career as a geotech engineer? Uh, as, a, as a start, uh, you need, uh, in my opinion, is uh, take all the challenges that you can face and learn from it. Uh, learn from a good mentors and start to, uh, to challenge yourself and let others to critique your work more and more. So, and I think this is, a, it helps a lot to build your knowledge and uh, always find something new to read. There is a lot of interesting research and I, I will encourage you to, to see some of these uh, new uh, challenges that you will see and keep uh, reading case studies. It's, uh, it's such a wonderful uh, piece of knowledge that you will have every day. Okay, uh, last set that I have uh, before taking more of your online questions is questions about rock science. So questions about rock science now is uh, after Ghana, Australia and Peru, where is the next rock science office opening? Uh, uh, very good question. Okay, so uh, if you notice what we did lately, um, our major uh, directors uh, we have three major directors that uh, we are very fortunate that they joined us is Raul de Marini in South America located in Peru uh, Dr. Reginald Hanna uh, in, in Ghana is taking care of uh, Africa and Dr. Alison McLuhan which takes care of Australia and New Zealand so uh, these are major uh, directors and offices that is created uh, in the globe. As we are expanding aggressively all around, so uh, we are, we, if, you, if you notice, and I think in the, in the previous uh, Rock News, we welcomed also uh, uh, our representative in Italy and another representative in, in UK. So I will say uh, a very good potential, it will be in Europe uh, and Middle East. That's what I think. Uh, it is coming very soon to have a, a maybe a director in the Middle East and uh, in Southeast Asia. Okay. Uh, I want to join Rock Science. Please guide me. Uh, okay. To join Rock Science, uh, you have to send me your CV. That's a start. You send me a resume and uh, make uh, sure to put some uh, uh, lot of uh, buzzword and attractive word that catch my attention. Then uh, uh, you will have uh, a, maybe uh, an interview and a spot to join us. We are always looking for, for a bright geotech and developers to join us uh, in our local office in Toronto. So uh, we are always hiring. We already hired two in this month. Uh, our plan is to increase uh, another 10% at least before the end of the year, because uh, our business is, uh, is very successful and uh, there is a lot of opportunity and there is the many things that we want to explore. So we are expanding uh, and uh, we will continue to expand. Can I use rock science software for thesis preparation without having a license? Um, our educational program, it showed throughout the year is so successful. So far we have around 520 universities that they are enrolled in our educational. Any university that has enrolled, they have a full access. So all the graduate students and postgraduate, they have a full access to the licenses. Now, if the university does not have the license, 
definitely we will encourage you if you can contact us contact our educational uh, officer and from there if there's if your supervisor is agreeing that uh, you want to use it for your research we will be more than happy to send you a license we are we usually send the full commercial license so your license it will be the full commercial that you can use it for your research so please feel free to contact us for for this um, the other question is uh, can i where do you see the future of rock science in the next five years uh, that's a, a very interesting question uh, where do i see rock science uh, the current state of rock science is one of the top geotechnical software provider in the world. Uh, in the last five years, we reached a very prominent position as, uh, as number one or two in the world. Uh, and this is, if you go and see our products, uh, you will see it in all geotechnical consultant, uh, either they're using it or they're comparing by using it or others are using it. So it's, uh, it's everywhere. Where do we see, I see myself in, uh, as rock science in five years, uh, definitely striving to be the best. Uh, we are striving to be uh, customer centric. So we are, that's why I am very interested to be engaged in this session. Uh, so we can hear more of where do you see us, what things that uh, you find it is very, challenging that we can yet we can help you to to do better job so so that's why to be the best is uh, and this is my my goal not my personal only goal the management goal of rock science so we are in a harmony that uh, the ceo the cto and the president we are all in the agreement of we are striving to be uh, the best period so in dealing with this that means uh, any feedback to be uh, from you, we will take it into consideration. And whatever you think is lacking in our tools or lacking in the in your geotechnical work, uh, please uh, feel free to drop me uh, an email, and uh, I will have I will be more than happy to have a chat with you to see how we can reach that goal together. Uh, the, the other question is, uh, what are the challenges facing rock science to keep providing the highest standard of services on the market? Uh, things are going uh, actually very fast in the industry, which means the software development is becoming uh, service-based. Uh, there are many changes. And that's why if you see what we did for the last year, starting in September 2019, we started to do a maintenance plus. Uh, so to keep our software on the current uh, cycle, which means we want always to have the software on continuous development. We don't want to give you a software and then you will wait two years from us to give you another fixes or another feature. So what we did is to include Maintenance Plus. So we are giving continuous software development. What is happening, I'll give you an example, uh, Swedge and Rock Plane, we gave the maintenance plus uh, maybe uh, four or five months ago. Uh, and this week we are releasing the new one. So basically the cycle is becoming uh, between six months maximum, you will have something new. So slide three, for example, there is a maintenance plus, there is a new things are happening in the next couple of weeks. But same thing with RS3. So we are, uh, this is, is becoming is a cycle. To do that, it's a big challenge for us because that means we are always in, in developing 16 different products. So that maintains uh, a lot of um, uh, things that evolved in our business and on how to manage it, how to be effective, and how to work together with, uh, with our users uh, and ambassadors to give the right development on the right time. So, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge, but in this year we learned a lot and I think we are going to be uh, in, a, in a very more stable, not only stable, but very successful, I would say in the next year. The next question is, uh, how has rock science been affected by the current pandemic? 
In this uh, pandemic, everybody was affected uh, one way or another. The good part for us, we are a software uh, company. So development is based on, okay, you have a server, you have computers, you can develop. So what, uh, what happened from us, it went from being from uh, one in the office at downtown location in Toronto to everybody who is working from home. So what is happening now is everybody is working from home and through uh, the video conferencing like Teams, we are doing our regulars, our regular development meetings, our uh, chatting, our every development is happening. So from development cycle, we are working uh, actually the same and even more because most of us are having more time to, to do more development. So this is uh, from the development. From business-wise, uh, actually we are we are doing extremely well. So uh, sales are still the same. Uh, we are working so you can call us and still we take calls on uh, the office is working. So calls are there, emails are there, and business are the same. So we are doing everything. We are shipping, uh, we are sending everything electronically. So the only things that's affected is basically sending the hard lock, uh, parceling or sending uh, the hard lock. But most of the time, and even now for all of us, we are agreeing that that piece of, uh, of a hard lock is becoming a problem because you want everything to be electronic. So that's why you can see our people are actually, they're contacting us to move to the server base, which is, is helping. So basically, uh, it is only affecting us maybe uh, of seeing one another and having fun to play ping pong. So this is, is affecting the office, but uh, uh, as business, not, not much. So this is, uh, I want to thank you all for sending me the questions. It was uh, so many variable questions. And I think I have uh, maybe 10 minutes to take some of the questions that came through uh, the chat that I have here. And uh, some of them are, I think most of them are uh, technical. So one question is, is came, uh, how groundwater loads are applied on tunnel boundary if, uh, if groundwater table is at the ground surface? And that's an interesting question. Uh, water loads, uh, usually it will be applied uh, through the effective stress analysis. And uh, from a tunneling perspective, now uh, it is uh, more challenging. Why I'm saying this? Because uh, what is going to happen here is how are you going to transfer specifically are you using a membrane are you using any block to block uh, the water so there are many cases that you want to do in rs2 and rs3 i'm sure you're familiar with there are things of to apply the pore water pressure to your interface so you can apply it through your interface to see the effect how does it apply so rs2 and rs3 give a lot we have a lot of options that you, you can explore on applying the pore water pressure on your tunnel and your tunnel support. Okay, uh, the other question is about uh, license for educational research. Please uh, feel free to send me an email if you didn't receive your license uh, so far. Now, um, when uh, the new rock and soil will be released, uh, I am assuming that uh, you're talking about, uh, we are doing uh, a special, uh, very interesting uh, question because we are working on the RS data, which is the rock and soil uh, testing. This is, uh, we started to lay it out and uh, we are starting to work on it. That product will be extremely useful uh, for if you are doing uh, any software, I'm sure you, you, you know that, you are always asked about what is my input, what is my strength input, and do I use more cool? What about if I use more complicated, softening, hardening? All this, uh, that tool that we are creating, which is the RS data, 
it's going to help a lot in starting to look at these uh, options and see which one is most suitable for your for your analysis. This uh, software, which as I told you, uh, is is currently under development. Hopefully, things will be uh, developed uh, soon, and I will say the product might we will have something at the end of uh, of the summer for that product. Another question is uh, options of input for joint parameters and detail along material properties in in RS2 software. Uh, the input in, for joint parameters, uh, I'm sure if you see RS2 and RS3, you can use uh, uh, the input parameters. Uh, you have the strength parameters, you have the stiffness parameters, the strength parameters, you can use more Coulomb, you can use Barton bandits, you can use a nonlinear. Uh, these are uh, the input parameters uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a material model. What what are the material to use? That is completely uh, up to the user. So I cannot say, okay, you can use, uh, uh, let's say, a friction angle of 20 degrees. Uh, we are facing now uh, some cases that you will see maybe 10 degrees will be more suitable for a specific type of an interface. So this is more into, uh, it requires testing for the shear strength of the joint. Uh, now is uh, can we insert a depth wise multiple k naught value in rock science uh, model uh, yes uh, you can specify uh, based on layer what is your k ratio so you can use k ratio for for different materials so you can use an advanced in the in the field stress option okay um, uh, one question regarding uh, EX3. In EX3 exists uh, many, any limitation for import geometries and map 3D project. For the people who uh, are familiar, Examine 3D is our 3D boundary element analysis. That product uh, was, uh, it was there in the industry. We didn't do any development till uh, last year. So we released the new product uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we renamed it to EX3. Uh, it's a very, very powerful uh, 3D stress analysis for underground, uh, specifically uh, if you're dealing with tunnels or mining. Uh, it uses boundary elements. So now, um, if you're familiar with boundary elements, so I am, you are going to, to mesh only the surface. You don't need domain meshing like FEM. So, uh, uh, and it gives you a lot of value to look at what if scenario for elastic. Now, uh, from geometries, we used exactly the same platform that you're, we are using for EX3, uh, sorry, for RS3 and Slider3. So you can import uh, any 3D DXF, you can import any uh, DTM, uh, you can import uh, any type of STL surfaces, uh, OBG surfaces, you, so you can import your surfaces uh, uh, to, to create the model in EX3. The other question, can I import map 3D? Yes, you can. Uh, you can import map 3D, you can import the, the stopes, you can import the folds, you can import the, the, input, uh, the input parameters for the analysis. Now, uh, is there uh, any possibility to export data from Settle or RS file uh, to export the data to where? So basically, uh, just to export the data in general, yes. My, all our product, you can export the data uh, into Excel, for example. So you can export it. But if you're, ta if you're, if you're asking to export it from Settle to RS file, uh, not yet. But uh, this is something of my interest. And if you have uh, any kind of uh, a simple example to share with me, please uh, feel free to send me an email and I will look at it. I am, uh, we are currently interested and we are exploring the effect of how do we import certain things from uh, like a different uh, load setup to settle 3D. So we are looking at a specific importer that to make it easier to import and settle. This is what we are currently doing. Okay, um, 
So here, let's see uh, other questions. Uh, could you please uh, tell better to use and when for slope stability, more or hook ground parameters? Okay. Which material model to use? Uh, it's debatable. <laughs> so uh, now keep in mind, you are asking specifically for two, more Coulomb and, and generalized hook ground. Uh, more Coulomb is a linear strength parameter. It requires C and phi. Hook Brown is either you are using uh, the regular uh, S, A, and M, UCS, or the GSI. So in that case, you are dealing with a nonlinear uh, strength function. So the question is, is the linear strength function is suitable for your material or no, your material that you know that it depends on for a low normal stress, you will have more uh, different shear compared to higher stress, normal stress. So is the linear is fitting you or nonlinear is fitting you? So it is the call for you and me to look at my material and to see is the approximation of a linear, is that good for me or no, I have to, to get more into the nonlinear shape of a generalized hook graph. So that's why it depends on, it's the call of the, the person who are doing the analysis is which one. For simplicity, it's more Coulomb. For more accuracy, it could be generalized hook ground, but I cannot answer in, in specific because I don't know the material that you're dealing with it specifically. Um, okay, uh, in Rockfall now, uh, uh, is uh, how can I use a scaling fu function? You can use different scaling function in rockfall analysis uh, in the project setting, and these are depends on uh, uh, on back analysis of your site. So basically, you have to have an idea of what is because these are reducing the impact, reducing basically how much bouncing is happening in your model. Uh, does uh, one question about RS2, does it consider uh, soil structure interaction when you use a micropile for slope stabilization? A uh, very interesting one, yes. Uh, when you come with a finite element, yes, you soil structure interaction, it will use that interface. If you're using a soil, basically what we call it in RS2, if you're using a structural element, the structural element, it has an interface between the sides. So definitely it will use that interface as a joint to, to study more into if the slipping is happening, how much is transformation of uh, transforming, like how much load is transferring from the soil to the structure and so on. So yes, the answer to that RS2 can, can handle it. Okay, uh, more into uh, so somebody is asking if I missed the technical. Definitely, I, as I said, this is, we can send it after this. We can send all the questions and the answer. Um, what is the best way to catch up uh, on the theory side? Uh, some question is saying, after acquiring a good amount of practical geotech engineering, what is the best way to catch up on the theory side? Uh, most of the, our courses, uh, workshop that we do, we, I, I try, and all uh, rock science instructors, we are trying to cover most of the theory of how we implemented it in our product. So uh, there are a couple of uh, very nice uh, books that we usually we recommend uh, for slope stability, for FEM, and, uh, and there are very interesting uh, pro like tools that you can improve your skills. And the workshops and these seminars, I will say it will help a lot. Uh, I think I am almost uh, coming to the end of the session. Maybe I will take uh, a last question. Uh, so it's saying, uh, uh, <laughs> what is rock science developing for Mars Geotech? Uh, uh, this is, yes, uh, the one, uh, if you see, if you saw our rock news, and I think uh, also uh, Sayona published it in, in 
in LinkedIn, we did an analysis, uh, not we, but uh, uh, some researcher, they did on uh, analysis of slope stability in Mars. So, and they did it with the slide two and Iris two. So, the, uh, and uh, they put it, they published it in a paper. And uh, I've seen this uh, years ago, and I thought it is interesting uh, to do with, to, to resurrect it and do it uh, like a casual uh, uh, reading segment that you will enjoy at this time to read uh, that rock science is reaching even stability, not only on Earth, uh, but to, to Mars. And by the way, as I finish uh, 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 this session, I want to acknowledge it's, a, it's, a, it's an Earth Day, so happy Earth Day for all. Uh, keep uh, Earth safe and uh, please uh, keep yourself safe for you and, fa and your family from uh, rock science, from myself and uh, from rock science family. I want to thank you all of attending this session and uh, please stay safe and send us uh, any suggestion, any questions. And if you enjoyed this session and you want more of it, please uh, contact me and maybe we will think of uh, to organize one in the future. So thank you all for attending this and enjoy your day. Okay, bye-bye now.